Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Ham Radio Dude, and I guess the question of the day to start is, have you seen one of these? This is known as an M5 stack, and what it is is it's an open source development kit, much like an Arduino, and it allows you to do cool things on coding in here, and a lot of it could interact with Ham Radio. Some of the projects you might be able to do with this are something like a Morris code or CW trainer. You could easily do something like putting a module on the back and having LoRaWAN on here, you could do a weather station for your area on here so you get an output of the weather, which is kind of cool. But what we're going to work on today is an IC705 S meter. And I saw the article in April 2022's edition of QST Magazine where they talk about how you could use one of these to do this project. So I figured let's do it together in case you have any questions and maybe we'll all learn something along the way. Now this walkthrough is going to be an easy walkthrough where I'm going to go through everything I could think of start to finish to get you up and running with the S meter on your M5 stack. And since this tutorial is about two things, you're going to need those two things, the ICOM IC705 as well as the M5 stack core kit. Now the core development kit could be found on amazon.com for around $50 and I'll link it below. And interestingly enough, for hardware, we're already taken care of. Everything we need is the ICOM IC705 and then the M5 stack kit, which includes a USB-C cable as well as some jumper wires. Next, we will need to download Visual Studio Code. It's not the same as Visual Studio, so I'll link it below. But once we get that downloaded, we're going to find the download location and click on the install button. Now, in this situation, I'm downloading this program directly to my desktop. Most likely your VS Code user setup will download to your downloads folder. Just double click it once you find it and you're gonna get prompted with the terms of services agreement. Go ahead and click on I accept. If you wanna read it, go ahead and read it and then click on accept. Click next. And this is basically just gonna ask you all your setup information. These are personal preferences like do you wanna create a start menu folder or not? I'm gonna go ahead and click next through all this but I am going to go ahead and create a desktop icon because I find it easier to work with programs when I can find the icons on the desktop. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to click next and install. Once the install is complete, I'll be back. I'm back. It only took just about a minute or two for it to install. And now we're prompted with something that says, do you wish to launch visual studio code? It's checked and that's great. Let's go ahead and click finish and visual studio could code should open up. Here it is. It opened up. And what are we going to do now? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go on the left hand side of the screen here and we have uh, quite a few options. I'm going to remind you, if you don't see these options here, make sure that you have Visual Studio Code and not just Visual Studio. You could do that by clicking help and going to about and it should say Visual Studio Code uh, in the pop up that occurs. So here on the left hand side, we have a toolbar and there's one thing here that says extensions. When we click on extensions, these are a list of things that we could basically install within Visual Studio Code. And we're going to type in platform IO for input output. And then IDE should pop up here. Platform IO IDE. It looks like a little uh, bug or alien or something. Click on install. When everything is done installing for the platform IO IDE, we should see something here that says platform IO IDE has been successfully installed. You must click reload. And what it's going to do is basically reload all the libraries within Visual Studio or Visual Code in order to make everything run. And now we're going to see that we have two things installed. We have the platform IDE and the C, C+. Let's go ahead and take a quick diversion. And we need to download the IC705 S meter from github.com. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. I have provided a link below to this GitHub page as well. And what's going to happen is when we get to this GitHub page, there's something on the right hand side that's in green. It says code. It's a drop down menu. And once we click on it, we're going to go ahead and we're going to copy and paste this HTTPS GitHub address. Alternatively, you can click on the little copy button to the right. Now that we have that copied, we're going to go back into Visual Studio Code. And this is where there's a little bit of difference between the QST magazine and what we're going through now, because the QST magazine says to go ahead and click on source control, which go ahead and do that. But what we're supposed to do next is we're supposed to click on clone repository, and then we're supposed to paste that GitHub address in that we just downloaded. And what that is going to do is it's going to take that whole project from GitHub and bring it in really nice and neat into Visual Studio save everything locally so that we, we can modify it locally as well. But the problem is, is we don't actually have Git for Windows downloaded. 
Git for Windows essentially is just what I said. It goes in, it, it grabs projects from github.com, but they also do have this for Macintosh and most likely they have it for Linux as well. So go ahead and click on Git for Windows. You're gonna be prompted with a screen here that says, hey, uh, do you want to download uh, Git? Click here to download, go ahead and download it. And when it's done, you're gonna get an executable that pops up. Go ahead and click on that executable. And it's gonna say, hey, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? Git for Windows. I'm gonna click yes. And now we're gonna have that install screen. Let's go ahead and just click yes or next through some of this. You could specify your program files and so forth, but I'm just gonna go ahead and click yes. With one change being made is I'm gonna put an additional icon on my desktop. The install will start and should just take one moment to complete. And once it's complete, let's go ahead and click finish. And then we're gonna go ahead and for right now, we're just gonna go click this reload button within Visual Studio Code. And now that we have that all reloaded, all we have to do is you could see, we can click on open folder or clone repository, click on clone repository, and then paste that address that we had just copied from GitHub. I'm using control V, but you could also right click and click on paste. Here now, all we have to do is hit enter or we can click on clone from GitHub right here. What will happen next is you'll be prompted for a location where you wish to download the whole project into a folder. So on my desktop, I created a folder called GitHub and all my projects will download into this repository location, if you will. So now that I'm in this GitHub folder, I'm gonna click on select repository location. And as you can see in the bottom right hand side of the screen is it cloned it. And it says, do you want to open the clone repository? Let's go ahead and click open now. Do you trust the authors of this file in this folder? And for right now, I'm going to go ahead and click yes, I trust the uh, authors of this file. Once the project is done downloading, you're going to see an explorer window on the left hand side of the screen, and there's going to be multiple options. But anyway, you see the IC 705 S meter folder within the project. And there are multiple things you could check like the images used. And this is where you would modify any code if you were so inclined. Now that we know where most of the heart of the project is located, we're gonna go ahead and click on the little alien or bug icon on the left-hand side, platform IO. And we have quite a few different options. All we have to do is click on M5 stack basic gray. And next we're gonna go ahead and under the general icon here or the general section, we're gonna click on build. After you click build, there will be a terminal on the bottom of the window that shows all the output and it attempts to build everything. If there's a critical error, it will stop and tell you that it can't be completed. Now, in my case, I do have four problems and the four problems are the character count is defined but not used. That just means a variable was set but never called and that's not a problem. Uh, value two was set but not used and these are basically just small problems. They're not errors that are gonna throw off the program per se. So we should be good. And then again, we're gonna to go to the terminal. As we can see, the terminal will be reused by task to close it, but everything was a success overall. Next up, we're gonna take our M5 device and we're gonna plug in our USB. The USB-C is in the middle. And again, the cable came with the device. We're gonna plug it in here and then let's go ahead and plug it into a USB port on our computer. Once you plug in everything, you're gonna get a screen that's it's a boot screen is what it is. And uh, this thing is gonna continue to try to boot up. Let's just set this down for a moment and Windows should also now detect the M5 stack. Let's go back into Visual Studio. And back in Visual Studio, since we've already built this, now we have the M5 stack plugged in, we want to go ahead and click on upload. Once we click on upload, it's gonna attempt to put this whole package, everything that's been built, right onto the M5 stack. Let's see how this works. During the installation or the uploading, you're gonna get a box or you might get something on your M5 stack since it's new that says flash file system needs to be formatted. It takes around four minutes. Please wait until the application starts. Just leave it right there. And while you're waiting, maybe get a cup of coffee. My doctor told me to limit myself to one cup of coffee a day. Ah. But sure enough, after those four minutes or so, guess what? It's installed and we already have the start of our S meter on the actual M5 stack. You can see here, it's really cool. It says need pairing. So how about we pair up our M5 stack? 
Next, we're going to use the IC705 and its Bluetooth capabilities to pair it with our little M5 stack. And if you didn't notice, I unplugged the USB. That's because there's a built-in battery on this as well. So this is wireless. Maybe we can make a watch in the future. That'd be kind of cool. But here we are. We're in the IC705. Let's click on menu. And then we're going to click on set. And if you could see that, it says Bluetooth set on the IC705. Here, there's a couple things I want to make sure you have enabled, such as Bluetooth is on. That's good. And then auto connect I have to on because then anytime it sees this device, it'll connect to it automatically. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on pairing connect and we're going to click on device search. Now you see a list of devices here already. These are devices that have already been connected to my IC705. So here I am, I click on device search and I have two options search headset or data device. Well, this is gonna be a data device in this situation or scenario. So I click on search data device. And here something pops up that says IC705 S meter. This is good, let it continue to search. And then once it's done, we're gonna click on that just like this. And it's gonna ask us, do you wanna connect? And we're gonna click yes. An option comes up and it says connecting. Do you see this pass key? And when I fade over to the S meter, I actually don't see that. Now you might be wondering, well, what's going on? Why don't I see it? Let's just go ahead and click yes for right now and see what happens. It says IC705 S meter connecting, connected, great. However, the M5 stack still says that it needs pairing. If you do have that same issue that I did, you're gonna wanna correct it by going to menu and then clicking on set. Under Bluetooth set, you're gonna page down until you see data device set. And my apologies that it's hard to kind of see there, but it's data device set. And then we're gonna click on the serial port function. And what we're gonna wanna do is click on CIV echo back on. Once you do that, you should be able to see that everything is now paired up successfully. But you might turn on your radio and you might be hearing a big signal, but you see nothing on the S meter. And that's because this S meter actually has multiple things on the bottom. These buttons here actually control what you're seeing. So right now we're set to power. And basically as we transmit, it'll show us how much power we're transmitting. We know that because power is black and the S button and the SWR button are a uh, light gray color. So what we wanna do is we can switch to SWR by hitting SWR and then that will go black and the rest of them will be light gray. But the signal strength meter is in the middle and when we hit that, you see I have a signal right now that's S9. And if I were to turn up my radio, There's not an S9 signal in there. That's just how much noise I must have at the moment. But the point is, is the meter will change with the signal strength that's occurring. And the same thing will happen down below with the frequency. As you change frequencies, that meter on the bottom will change, but there is a delay. So that took about uh, two seconds or a second and a half to update the frequency as well. Why is this useful? Why is this practical? What's the, what's the purpose? Well, I have two reasons I can think of now. If and typically my noise level is a lot lower. If my noise level is usually typically S3 and all of a sudden I'm looking at this and I see something jump up to like S9 on here, I know to go ahead and jump on and turn on my volume. Also, if I'm riding a bicycle, this is a lot easier to have on front of the bicycle to see what's going on as opposed to putting the whole ICOM IC705 on the bicycle. There is one kind of weird uh, bug or flaw with this thing. And what that would be is, is if you listen close or if you have really good hearing, it's making a ticking noise, tick, 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 and it's consistently happening. So I'm kind of waiting to blow up. Um, however, I think, I guess I can get over that, especially from outdoors. I probably wouldn't notice it much anyway. There are other programs you can install on here, like a kind of like a grid tracker and you could do weather. I mean, it would be really, really cool to have weather on here. And this does have built-in Wi-Fi or you can do build-in Wi-Fi. So you should be able to use an API to, to get weather. Maybe we'll work on that app here in the near future and build it together. If you want to see that, let me know. But this was just more of a tutorial to see how cool the M5 stack could be and also how to get the IC705 S meter on your M5 stack. Again, QST had a great magazine and Pascal, who wrote the article, did a pretty fantastic job. 
I got to say, I'm really liking whatever new format they're doing there at the ARRL. It's working, but I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm Ham Radio Dude 73.